الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا وسيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا 
يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كلام الله عز وجل وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة All praise is due to Allah, we praise him. We seek his aid and we ask for his forgiveness. We seek refuge in Allah from the evils of ourselves and the evil consequences of our actions. Whomsoever Allah guides, none can lead astray, and whomsoever Allah leaves to go astray, none can guide. I testify that there is none worthy of worship and devotion but the Almighty Allah alone. And I testify that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam is his servant and his messenger. O you who believe, fear Allah as he should be feared and die not, except as Muslims. O mankind, be dutiful to your Lord, who created you from a single person, and from him he created his wife, and from them both he created many men and women, and fear Allah through whom you demand your mutual rights and observe the rights of your kin. Surely Allah is ever and all watcher over you, O you who believe. Keep your duty to Allah. Fear him and speak the truth. He will direct you to righteous deeds and will forgive your sins. And whoever obeys Allah and his messenger has indeed attained a great achievement. The best words are the words of Allah. And the best guidance is the guidance of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. And the worst things in the religion are the newly invented matters. For all the newly invented matters in religion are heretical innovation and bid'ah. And every bid'ah is misguidance. As Ramadan started at one time in the life of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he addresses the companions radiyallahu anhum, saying to them, Inna hadha shahra qad hadarakum. This month has presented itself to you. It has arrived. Fihi laylatun khayrun min alfi shahr. مَنْ حُرِمَ خَيْرَهَا فَقَدْ حُرِمَ الْخَيْرَ كُلَّهَ In this month, there is a night that is better than a thousand months. He who misses out on its goodness and its blessings, then he has missed out on all good. وَلَا يُحْرَمُ خَيْرَهَا إِلَّا كُلُّ مَحْرُومٌ and none will be denied its blessings except those who are denied the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we are living the, the peak of Ramadan, the last 10 nights, when everyone now feels exhausted, tired, they have given what they have, and the temptation is to slow down now. The temptation is to take a break. But that's the, that's, that's the time to give your best and offer your best to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You can't afford to lose this. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, وَلَا يُحْرَمُ خَيْرَهَا إِلَّا كُلُّ مَحْرُومٌ No one is denied the blessings of the night of Al-Qadr, the night of power, except those who are truly deprived. Those who are truly denied because they deserve to be denied. He who misses out on the blessings, he who is denied the blessings of the night of Al Qadr, the night of power, then he has been denied or she has been denied all good. All good. That means if you miss out on Laylat Al Qadr. You will miss out on all good. You've been denied. There's no good for you. That's what it means. فَقَدْ حُرِمَ الْخَيْرَ كُلَّهُ 
So what that means, a person who truly worships Allah, a person who truly values Allah, will seize, seize these nights and make sure, do their best, make this sacrifice for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guarantee that they never miss out on this night. That is worth a lifetime. Where do you get an opportunity like this? That's why, as we mentioned previously, the Prophet Sallallahu would exert himself in the last 10 nights of Ramadan. He would perform itikaf, meaning stay at the masjid all the time, worshipping Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, staying away from the dunya, even from the halal, staying away from it, because the halal in these times could become a distraction. Eat only as much as necessary. Sleep only as much as necessary. You can't miss out. Every minute of this night is precious. And there is no point getting into the guesswork of which night it is. Is it going to be the 25th? The 27th? Or was it the 21st? Or the 23rd? Or which Ramadan, as people started it this year, which one got it right? The last 10 nights catch them, all of them. You can't afford to miss out on Laylatul Qadr. That's why the Prophet ﷺ said, فَلْتَمِسُوهَا فِي الْعَشْرِ الْأَوَاخِرِ التَّمِسُوهَا Seek it, desperately seek Laylatul Qadr in the last 10 nights. And that's the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ and his companions. And that is to exert oneself and do your best in the last 10 nights without wasting your time and all of these calculations and all of this guesswork and you don't, you know, avoid all of those trends. People who are, you know, getting online. In the last few years, people have become obsessed with watching the rising of the sun. And everyone says, oh, that's a bright sun. Oh, this is a mild sun. Oh, maybe it was this night and that night. And these people then get into fights. Each one trying to, them, to prove themselves to be right. You know, this time you should be spending it seeking Allah's forgiveness, reading Quran, making dua, performing prayer, rather than wasting time with all of these futile arguments. We can't afford to miss out on these. All of us have our sins. All of us have our weaknesses. All of us are in desperate need of Allah's forgiveness and Allah's mercy. We can't afford to miss out on this night. And I'm addressing everyone here. And there are so many things that we can do. The most important thing is for those who are able to perform itikaf at the masjid, perform itikaf. Stay at the masjid. You can't perform itikaf for all of the ten nights, at least as many nights as you can. If you can't stay the whole day or the 24 hours, at least stay part of the day. Consider you stay in the masjid. Come here, open your fast here. When the moment you step into the masjid, consider this, have the intention that this is i'tikaf. And stay in the masjid. Open your fast here. Pray taraweeh here. And if you are able to pray the tahajjud later, later at the night, do that as well. And stay in the masjid. Consider this to be i'tikaf. Then pray fajr here. Then if you have to go for work, or you have to get some sleep, and you have some other obligations, now you terminate your i'tikaf at least for that day. So hopefully you get the reward of performing i'tikaf and fulfilling the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Cancel social media from your life these few days. Now half of these days are gone. We only have five days left. Five days left of Ramadan. That's the time to show Allah your best. Cancel social media. We can't live without social media. We can't, without watching videos or reading nonsense all the time. We can't do that for five days for the sake of Allah. And the reward is what? If you get forgiven, it's worth it. If you guarantee a place in paradise, it's worth it. Don't waste these great opportunities for just reading some nonsense or watching some videos. Truly, if you are able to put your phone on the side, you know, lock it up somewhere. For the last few days, make the sacrifice. Wallahi, you will discover some things about yourself and about your heart and about, your, and about life you never thought were possible.
we are so we're so ruined by these devices and the negative influence they have on us and it's so beautiful to see the youth mashallah filling the masjid our teenagers and our youth it's so beautiful to have them in the masjid to see them in taraweeh to see them at tahajjud to see them opening their fast here to see them volunteering in the masjid to feed people who are opening their fast we ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to write to write their reward in full and it's beautiful to see the recitation and the then the jama'ah here and people coming together to worship allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and don't underestimate this don't underestimate it that's the way of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and his companions when you leave the dunya you could waste your time. You could be spending your time watching stuff online or on TV or having good time with the family. There are people that they have this culture in many Muslim back home cultures of Layali Ramadan, the nights of Ramadan, where they listen to music and watch TV series and films and movies and smoke shisha and just have sweets and food all night. And it's not about Allah. And it's not about Islam and it's not about the Quran. These are the nights of the devil. These are Layali Shaitan. They are not Layali Ramadan. Layali Ramadan are spent with you standing before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And people ask, What can I do during these nights? First and foremost, if you can pray Sal Salat al Isha. At the masjid in congregation, that would be the most important thing to do. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Man salla al-'isha fi jama'atin fakannama qam nisf al-layl." He who prays fajr uh, isha in congregation, it is as if he prayed half of the night, half of the night just by praying isha in jama'a. وَمَنْ صَلَّ الْفَجْرَ فِي جَمَاعَةٍ فَكَأَنَّمَا قَامَ اللَّيْلَ كُلَّهُ. And if the person prays also fajr. In congregation, then it is as if this person has prayed the whole night. So make sure you don't miss out on Isha and Fajr in Jama'ah. That's the first and foremost. Number two, pray the Taraweeh with the Imam. Until the Imam finishes. Man salla ma'al imam hatta yansarif kutiba lahu qiyamu layla. He who prays with their Imam, the Prophet said about Qiyam Ramadan, about standing up in prayer in Ramadan. Whoever prays with their with the Imam until the Imam completes the Salah, completes the set that they are praying, then it is as if this person prayed the whole night. These are opportunities from Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. He's offering the offering us these things. So should I pray the whole night? There are so many other things to do. You can always read Quran, and you should have your Mushaf with you, or at least have the app on your phone and read. If you have the Mus'haf, it's better because the, um, if you have your phone, it's a temptation for you to check social media. So hold your Mus'haf. Wallah, in many masajid you go and sometimes I, I give a, a, a lecture here and there in a masjid. And sometimes I need the Mus'haf to be in front of me to be talking about some verses. And I find most of the Mus'haf that I hold are brand new. Never been touched. Never been touched. You know, it's beautiful to find the masahif in the masjid worn out. Because that means people are reading. People are connected to the Quran. So hold your mushaf and read. What else can you do? Remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Enjoy the sweetness and the beauty of being with Allah and remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Be from al dhakirin Allah kathiran wa dhakirat. Be from those who remember Allah often. La ilaha illallah. Have you given yourself the opportunity to taste the sweetness of saying La ilaha illallah? The word that you were created for. The word that this universe, existence itself, was created for it. When you engage in this word and, in this word and allow yourself to enjoy its sweetness, to delve into the depth of its meaning, you will discover a sweetness you won't find in anything in this world. You won't find it in food. You won't find it in entertainment. You won't find it in the things you love. It is way more profound than that. It's the sweetness of the heart. To connect with your Lord. 
Do you have a special, special relationship with La ilaha illallah and the unique relationship with Subhanallah? Have you felt the unique meaning of saying Alhamdulillah many times? Each one of them has its own taste. Why do we miss out on these? These are treasures from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These are al baqiyat al salihat. This is the good that remains, remains with us for good for eternity. What else can we do? If you are able to help others, for example, help others open their fast, help others in their affairs and whatever they need. We have elderly people, we have people who are ill and they might need our help, they might need our support. So offer that to them. Our mothers and our wives and our sisters who are preparing food for their family, don't underestimate, underestimate what you're doing. Don't underestimate what you're doing. If people don't value what you do, Allah knows what you're doing. Because if you don't do that, how do you think life is going to go? And we have swallowed a lot of this negative influence where we look down upon some great things and great tasks that if they are performed for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they can be an act of nearness to Allah, a great act of worship. And one of the greatest things that we can do in the last 10 nights is Tawbah. All of us, we need to, to turn back to Allah. All of us need to ask Allah for forgiveness. All of us are in need of this. All, all of us are this person who has committed grave sins against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, knowingly and unknowingly. We are in desperate need of Allah's forgiveness and Allah's pardon. And we all know the hadith. When Aisha radiallahu anha asked the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, قالت يا رسول الله أرأيت إن علمت ليلة القدر أي ليلة هي فما أقول O Messenger of Allah, if I recognize, if I know which ليلة القدر it is, what should I say? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, قولي اللهم إنك عفو تحب العفو فعف عني O Allah, you are forgiving, you are pardoning, forgive me. Forgive me, free me from my sins, from the consequences of my from the repercussions of my sins and that's tawbah that's tawbah we need to cleanse our things our, our our souls we need to cleanse our hearts we commit sins we violate the rights of allah left and right and center all the time and we need to repent to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we need to ask allah for forgiveness and that's an important thing to do in these night in these nights so make sure you don't waste this time. Make sure you don't waste this time. And don't get involved in arguments about how many rak'ahs we should pray or we shouldn't pray. Should I pray after witr or I shouldn't? These issues have been discussed by the scholars and there are differences. There are differences among the scholars. If there is a matter or disagreement among the scholars, there is a rule that is agreed upon by all Muslim scholars unanimously. لا إنكار في مسائل الخلاف there should be no issue, no grudge. And there should be, we should not reprimand one another when it comes to matters where the Muslim scholars have disagreements, valid disagreements. And these are valid disagreements. So it's okay, leave it. You're not going to solve these problems. Your priority should be to connect to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in these nights and seize them and never miss out on them. So... There's nothing else to do these nights. But it requires love of Allah. But you know, because what keeps people going these nights is the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the worship of Allah, the devotion, the seek it, the, the genuine and honest and authentic seeking of Allah's mercy and Allah's love. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from among those. الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين وبعده. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم made dua to Allah سبحانه وتعالى and he mentioned that in a few occasions and he talks about how Allah responds to him and in one of the ahadith collected by Imam Ahmad in his musnad and it's authentic. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, wa inni qad a'ataytu ummatak an la uhlikahum bi sanatin amma. And I have guaranteed to your ummah, O Muhammad, that I will never destroy them with famine. Meaning famine will never wipe out this ummah. It might hit some pockets, but it will never destroy this ummah. Because there were nations in the past that disappeared, that were wiped out because of famine. وَلَا أُسَلِّطَ عَلَيْهِمْ عَدُوًّا مِنْ غَيْرِهِمْ فَيَسْتَأْصِلَ بَيْضَتَهُمْ And I shall not send an enemy upon them, from other than them, that would be able to wipe them out or destroy them. That's a guarantee from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that this ummah will survive. This ummah will survive. Wallahi, if you look at history, and if you collectively bring all of the conspiracies and the attacks and the campaigns that took place against the Muslim Ummah, and if you take 10% of that and direct it to any other nation, it would be ruined, destroyed forever. And we have nations that have been wiped out with far less than what was leveled at the Muslim Ummah. Yet, from the time of the Prophet ﷺ and the time of the Khulafa al Rashidun, the attacks upon the Muslims. Then after that, the Crusades, then the, the Mongols and all of their attacks on the Muslims. Then the years of colonialism, then the incessant attacks, ideological attacks, psychological attacks, military attacks, political attacks on the Muslim Ummah until this day, until now with what is happening in Gaza. They will never be able to wipe out this ummah. It will remain strong. And the same hadith the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, إِنَّ اللَّهَ زَوَى لِيَ الْأَرْضَ فَرَأَيْتُ مَشَارِقَهَا وَمَغَارِبَهَا وَإِنَّ مُلْكَ أُمَّتِي سَيَبْلُغُ مَا بَلَغَ مَا مَا زُوِّيَ لِي مِنْهَا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed to me. Allah folded up the whole earth to me. Everything in it was brought near so I could see it. And the dominion of my ummah, the power of my ummah shall cover everything that I saw. That's a promise from the Prophet ﷺ. This ummah will remain strong. It will never be defeated. No matter what they do. And yes, we live at times of deception where, where the most heinous crimes are committed Yet they are beautified, yet they are camouflaged. Even with all of the imagery that we are getting, there is a lot of deception going around. Yet this ummah will remain strong. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chooses from his servants people that he takes as martyrs. This is how we see the loss that hits the Muslim ummah. But as Muslims, every one, every individual one of us, in our capacity, in what we can do, we should do what we can. And part of what we can is obviously financial support. And the collection of this Jum'ah is going to the people of Gaza bi'idhnillahi ta'ala. We have the Human Concern International today, the brothers from there, Jazahumullahu khairan. <clears throat> they are making the collection today for the people of Gaza. Alhamdulillah, so far I was told that this masjid has contributed what is more than $70,000 for Gaza. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept from everyone who donated. Inshallah, we want to top this up. Hopefully, inshallah, we can reach at least 100,000 today. Bi'idhnillah ta'ala, for our brothers and sisters. No better gift to give them, or at least show the least support for these brothers who are in the front lines, who are taking all of the heat on behalf of the whole ummah. That we support them with what we can financially. But that's not the end of it. And here I speak to parents and I speak to the youth. The youth, our future. You were not created to play. You were not created to waste your time on social media and following all of these silly trends that take the world by storm and waste your time on video games and waste your time on all of the nonsense that you know about. You were created for something great. 
You are part of an ummah that has the best history ever in humanity. You come from a nation that had made the best contributions to humanity in every sense. This is the ummah that holds the right of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's the, it's the safety valve for humanity. It is the only ummah that fulfills Allah's right to be worshipped alone. Humanity, even the, the most wicked among humanity, are protected by the Muslim ummah. Why? From the punishment of Allah. Because the Muslim ummah is the one that holds the punishment of Allah at bay by obeying him. You are part of a glorious ummah. Don't be, don't be brainwashed. Don't ever think that you are insignificant. You have so much to say. And you have so much to do for the sake of this ummah. And you can do much. But through all of that influence, they try to make you feel insignificant. That you can't do anything. But the fact is when you come to the Quran, our youth, when you come to the Quran, when you learn the book of Allah, when you are the one leading us in salah here, the future of this ummah will be bright. What makes us weak, we our ummah, is that we did not hold on to the book of Allah well. We don't have enough critical mass among us to uphold the rule of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that's why we are suffering. This land, this world belongs to Allah. He gives it to whomever He wills. We have not fulfilled the condition. But maybe with you we can do that. You are the hope of this ummah and Ramadan is the start. You should take this Ramadan as the beginning, the beginning of a new life. Don't waste your life with all of these video games. Don't waste your time. Come and learn the Quran. Come to the masjid. We don't want to see you only in Ramadan. Come to the masjid here, learn the Quran. There are programs where you can start to learn the Quran, memorize it, learn the tafsir, learn how to practice it. There are fiqh classes. There are classes dedicated for the youth. There are classes for the sisters. There are classes for memorizing the Quran. There are classes for tafsir. There are classes for spirituality. Don't waste your life with all of these trivial things. There are great things that you can do. And you hold a responsibility for the ummah. Because when we are weak, our brothers suffer. And our sisters are killed. And our, Ill, our elders are massacred. Our children are violated. When we ourselves don't hold on to the rope of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's the responsibility that we shoulder and we hold. We can't stay helpless. We can't afford to stay helpless. And why? Why are we helpless? Because we hold on to this dunya and the Prophet ﷺ made it clear in the hadith. Allah shall take from the hearts of your enemies their fear of you. And Allah shall place in your heart, throw in your hearts, الوهن, the weakness. They said, what is الوهن, Messenger of Allah? What is this weakness? He said, حب الدنيا وكراهية الموت. Love of this dunya is what destroys us. Love of this dunya is what destroys it. It holds us captive. It makes you a slave for the dunya. A slave for shaitan. Allah created you at a level higher, high above that. So don't stoop to that level. And finally, you know, don't forget zakat al-fitr. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam made it an obligation. Farad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Zakat al-fitri tuhratan lil-sa'imi min al-laghwi wal-rafath wa tu'matan lil-masakeen. As Ibn Abbas radiyallahu anhuma said, that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam prescribed sadaqat al-fitr as a purification for all of the blemishes of your fast, the imperfections of your fast, and the flaws that we have. And in worship, we always seal our worship with seeking forgiveness and doing something good. We do that after salah. We do this after hajj as well. So after Ramadan, there is Sadaqat al-Fitr, and it should be given before Salat al-Eid. And there are, alhamdulillah, the organizations that collect it, and today as well, the Human Concern International, they have a special account for Sadaqat al-Fitr, and most of it is going to be, inshallah, in Gaza, bi ta'ala. So make sure that you give Sadaqat al-Fitr for each member of your family. Each 
single one in your family they have to give that share and i'm not sure what the what the estimate today is some said ten dollars some said fifteen dollars do your best bi idnillahi ta'ala and consider this to be an act of nearness to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala اللهم اغفر للمؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات الاحياء منهم والاموات اللهم اغفر لنا ذنوبنا واسرافنا في امرنا وثبت اقدامنا وانصرنا على القوم الكافرين اللهم اغفر لنا ولوالدينا ولمن لهم حق علينا برحمتك يا ارحم الراحمين اللهم ابرم لهذه الامه امر الرشد يعز فيه اهل طاعتك ويذل فيه اهل معصيتك ويعمل فيه بكتابك وسنة نبيك صلى الله عليه وسلم اللهم وفقنا لقيام ليلة القدر اللهم وفقنا لقيام ليلة القدر اللهم وفقنا لقيام ليلة القدر واجعلنا فيها من الفائزين اللهم أعتق رقابنا من النار برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم كل إخواننا في غزة وفي الشام وفي السودان وفي غيرها من بلاد المسلمين برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون اذكروا الله يذكركم اشكره على نعمه يزدكم وصل اللهم وسلم وبارك على عبدك ورسولك محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين